Are you guys sure you've got this? Yeah. The twins are plugged in. Baby's asleep. How hard can this get? We're men. Besides, I bumped into Chuck Norris at a Pizza Hut once. I think his powers rubbed off on me. Get out of here. Go on, enjoy your mommy getaway weekend. Oh, this weekend was a bad idea. You remember what happened last time we watched the kids? I'm not a pinata. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need help. Warning, use of this product may alter your perception of reality. <sighs> All right, everything looks the same. This is a joke. Guys, it's like the Sahara in this cup. Can somebody hit me with some juice? <laughs> and listen, pulp, no pulp, doesn't make a difference to me. You're the ones dealing with the diaper. Mom goggles. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Okay, sweetie, I need you to sit on your bottom. Listen to daddy. You sit on your bottom, okay? Daddy's gonna come get you. Don't, don't move. Don't, 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 don't dance. Just sit on your bottom. Daddy's gonna come get you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you try to stop me. Baby made a poopy, yes you did. Where are your mom goggles? They wouldn't fit over my hazmat suit. Take this. Oh, oh. You're so cute, uh -huh. And then the little boy <laughs> rocked his mommy. Oh, I love you forever. I like you too. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Oh, well you take it and you fold it from corner to corner. No, I'm, I'm asking the question, how do moms do all of this? How do they handle it all? Well, maybe they have goggles we don't know about. It's as if God gave moms a special way of looking at things, you know? Okay, who taught you servanthood? Who modeled grace? Who gave you a taste of what God's love could look like? My mom, Mr. T, and my mom. Anyway, I, I just think God gave moms a special way of looking at things. Hey, honey. Hey, how's it going at home? It's all good. Guess you could say I'm starting to catch a glimpse of what your world looks like. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Mama. Hold on, your daughter wants to say something to you. I did mama. She says she misses you. And she realizes how important you are in her life. 
she doesn't know how you do it. And she knows that she can't make it without you. She said all that, huh? I don't know if she said it. But it's what I wanted to say. And I should have said it a lot sooner. I thank God for you. The twins. No. Um, it, it, it was nothing. Um, I, we, we have to go, okay? Um, lo love you, Mommy. Today is Mother's Day. Before I, I move into that, I just want to acknowledge the fact that Mother's Day isn't always the most cheery time for some people. And I want to just take a moment just to, to say that's okay. But today, the world has decided that we are to spend a moment thinking about mothers. It's a day that comes around once a year. It's a day that I forget once a year. Pretty much every year. I thank the Lord that I have a wife who makes sure that the cards get written. That I make a text message to my mom, which I forgot to do this morning. Uh, you, you haven't had it yet because I'm going to do it later. I'm going to do it later. <laughs> there are advantages and disadvantages of having family in the room. I have to tell the truth. No, I, I do all the time. Just, yeah. Whoa, wow. Some people think that mother is just someone who gave birth to a child. But the reality is, it is far more than that. I think I used this quote the last time I spoke about Mother's Day. It's from an American journalist called Sidney Harris. And I think he, he said something like this. Being a mother isn't simply a matter of having children. To think that is as, as absurd as believing that has a piano makes one a musician. I've heard some people who think having a piano makes them a musician, and it really doesn't. Having a child doesn't make one a mother. It's not surprising that the world falls short of understanding what mother is, doesn't understand what father is, but because motherhood was God's idea, he knows what makes a good one. One mother that God had recorded in the Old Testament was Hannah. I spoke a little bit about her when we were dedicating Little Melody. How many of you like art? I like art. I enjoy a good painting. We have amongst us some extremely talented artists. I don't know about the technical side of art, but I do know about some of the aspects of art that I like. This morning, I would like to paint a picture of how a godly mother looks. And I'm going to give us two things, just two things to consider because we've completely run out of time. So I'm, I'm going to bring this down to two things. I'm going to base my message on the story of Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1. But before we get started with painting this picture of a godly mother, we need to get our canvases prepared. And I'm going to do that by asking a question. Do you think mothers are important? Do they matter? There is an absolutely obvious answer to that. Without mothers, none of us would be here. But more than that, 
Who we are has been marked and impacted by our moms, for good or for bad. Mothers play a significant role in a person's development. And how our mom interacts and behaves towards us can have a huge impact on who we become. So you guys, you see me, you can blame my mom for it. (laughs) Some people here have great memories of mom. I do. Some don't. In one way or another, our moms helped shape us. The fact is, mothers have a huge impact on the world. I think it would be foolish to believe that Mary, the mother of Jesus, had no degree of influence on Jesus. And what about John the Baptist? He was allowed to become the eccentric individual that he became by his mom. Both of those people, Jesus, John the Baptist, they grew up to be men of God. Why? Because they had an affirming, loving mother. Think about it. How many mothers would allow their children to go out in public having never shaved, wearing clothes made of camel hair? And how many mothers would have said to their best friend, oh yeah, I packed the best lunchbox this morning. He's got his honey. He's got his wild locusts. He's living life. I look around at some of our young people and I think, some of you did that this morning. You didn't let them shave? I don't. Throughout history, we see moms having incredible influence on their children's lives. John Wesley credits his mother for his spiritual formation and the passion he had for Christ. That experience could be told time and time again. Charles Spurgeon, in one of his early sermons, paid tribute to his mother in this way. There was a boy once, a very sinful child, who hearkened not to the counsel of his parents, but his mother prayed for him. And now he stands to preach to his congregation every Sabbath. And when his mother thinks of her firstborn preaching the gospel, she reaps a glorious harvest that makes her a glad woman. On August 14, 14, 1981, Morrow Graham quietly left this earth in her sleep and entered heaven. When word came Mr. Graham said, I wept and yet rejoiced at the same time. Of all the people I have ever known, she had the greatest influence on me. I am sure one reason that the Lord has directed and safeguarded me, as well as Ruth and the children, through the years was the prayers of my mother and father. The great evangelist Billy Graham speaking about his mom. Now, like I said, some people don't have a positive experience of mom. And it wouldn't be real to just state the good times, the good influences. There are many people, many men throughout history who have done some horrendous things. Who you have to ask, what was the influence on their life? Now, in no way do I blame mothers for choices. We each have our own choice. We each choose to do something or not to do something. That is our responsibility. But there are some correlations between the influence a mother has on someone, on their child, and how they turn out. If it's a bad experience... There's a wrestling that has to go on in that person to choose to do better, to choose to be better. Not always do they win that wrestling match. Being a mother is to be a major influencer in the world. 
A mother plays a primary role in molding and shaping the lives of countless people. Yet it seems in this day and age, motherhood is considered by many to be something unfashionable. To be a mother is less important than a career or finding out who you are. In the world today, we've blurred the lines between male and female. You've heard me speak over the last few weeks on identity. How God made us in his image, male and female, he made us. And he placed in each one of us a different set of characteristics, specialisms that only a woman has, that only a man has. There's some overlap at times, absolutely. But God created us male and female for a reason. Because let's face it, without mom goggles, us blokes wouldn't be able to do what mothers do. And vice versa. But it's become unfashionable, motherhood has. More and more ladies are leaving it till the last minute to have children. I'm talking about those that choose that. You know my situation, mine and Marie's situation. We couldn't have children, yet God gave it to us. At the last minute, just about when we could cope with it. I have to be careful because two of my children are right there. My only two children are right there staring at me. Like I said, there's some disadvantages of having family in the same church that you lead. No, I love my kids. But you see, I understand that there are some reasons why some will leave it late. Because there's no choice. But more and more ladies are choosing to leave it later. Why? Because they want a career first. Because they want to explore who they are first. To find themselves. And in and of itself, that's not that bad. But motherhood and children don't get in the way of a woman living her life. This is a narrative that the world speaks over us. But motherhood is something massively important. God created it and saw that it was good. Mothers are important. It's not an inconvenience. It's, a, it's an important, critical role that needs to be played. And Hannah was such a mother. What can we learn about godly motherhood from Hannah? Even in her deepest anguish, Hannah was committed to God in prayer. Her heartfelt pain and shame was that she had no children. And on top of this, she had to endure the daily taunting of Peninnah, mocking her barrenness, particularly when they went to the house of the Lord each year. Even Eli the priest accused her of being drunk in chapter 1. Verse 21 to 28. As she cried out to God for him to give her a child. Nevertheless, she continued to pray earnestly, humbly trusting and persevering in God. And God remembered Hannah. That's verse 19. I've already told you, you know some of my story. We couldn't have children. Eleven years of prayer. 11 years of chasing after God. 11 years of getting it wrong, doing it our own way at times. And then God remembered us. And faith was born. And then God remembered us again, 12 months almost to the day. And Anaya was born. Some of you will know little bits about my family. How each of us, me, my brothers, my sister, we walk with the Lord. Two of us lead churches. 
One of us is an evangelist. The other helps her husband lead a church. Gets involved in the children's work. Worship leads. Or leads worship. It wasn't always that way though. You see, for two of my brothers, I say two of my brothers as if I've got more. No, for my two brothers, they didn't always follow the Lord. They turned their backs on God. And some, many in the church, turned their backs on them. But there was always one person that never turned their back on my brothers. Alongside God. And that was my mom. Who never stopped praying for them. Who never stopped praying for any of us children. And it is because of those prayers. And that crying out to the Lord. That I can say my family knows Jesus. Thank you mom. The first thing that makes a mother a godly mom is she is committed to God and to prayer. A godly mother takes time to pray for her children. We live in a world where people think they have the right to all sorts of things, where many have this sense of entitlement. We like to believe it is our right to have or own something and then determine how that something or someone is to be used. The Bible teaches us to see things differently. To see all good things as gifts to us from God. And that we should submit to God's will in how we live and how we determine how that thing or someone is to be used. A simple example is the money we have. We're called to see that every penny we have is given to, that is given to us is a gift. From God. But we may argue, but Dan, I worked for that. I did that on my own. I went to work. I earned that money. Well, who was it that gave you the ability to go to work? Who was it that gave you the hands to be able to work? Who was it that gave you the mind to be able to do the job that you do? It was God. And therefore, everything that you have has been given to you. It's a gift. I said that about Melody to Ben and Helen. She is a gift from God. A good gift. Might not feel like it all the time. When you've, got no, you've had no sleep for three nights straight. Where there's poo up the walls. And nappies in the bin. And Helen's walking around with cocktail sticks in her eyes. It might not feel like it, but I guarantee, I promise you. She, Melody is a gift from God. And she is a good gift. And it is God that has given you that gift. Hannah knew this. She recognized that Samuel was not hers, but that he belonged to God. He was on loan to her from God. Samuel was a gift from God. The Lord's will for Samuel took precedence over her own desires for her child. And I'm sure this was a struggle for her. It was costly. She would miss out on so much many of us parents don't even think about. It's just part of having a child. Good night cuddles, playing games together, sleepovers under the stars. Like I said, sleepless nights, diarrhea up the walls, nappies in the bin. These things that we all know come and happen. Hannah would have missed out on a lot of this. Why? Because she gave Samuel, over to God's desires for him. Regardless of the cost to herself, Hannah wanted Samuel to belong to the Lord more than to herself. How many of our parents had dreams for us? They wanted us to be doctors, nurses, businessmen and women. Businessmen and women. What dreams do you have for your children? Too often, moms and dads have their minds made up about what their children will do and not do. Kids, you do not listen to this. You will become doctors. You will make a lot of money. And you will not put me in a home. 
to put your trust in God and put His desires for our children above ours is an incredibly hard thing to do and takes faith that God's will is better than ours. How many times have we prayed the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Do we really mean that? When it will cost us the most. Hannah did. And that is why the second thing that makes a godly mom is that a godly mom commits her children to the Lord. As we can see, being a godly mother involves being a God-focused influence. Faith in God. Prayer. Intercession. And placing God's will above their own. Being a mother is far more than just having a baby. And that's why I can speak this to every lady in this room. Because you may not have your own biological child with you right now. I laughed and joked about it earlier. But there is a sea of children in front of you that need spiritual moms. That need that spiritual mom to pray over them. To offer them advice. To encourage them. To support them. To walk alongside them. And only you ladies can be that. So to those of you who do have children, I want to ask you, will you share a bit of that mom love around? Because there are plenty of people in this world that need a mom that will encourage them. That need somebody who will support them. That need somebody who will pray over them that needs somebody who will ask and intercede on their behalf would you share a bit of that love around and be a mother to the motherless mother's day is a massively important day and i've run out of time but i know it's a painful day for some where families are broken. Where children haven't come. Where that hasn't been the gift that God has blessed you with. For those of you who are still waiting for children. For those of you who are still waiting for marriage and then children. But today we just want to honor you all. Ladies, we want to honor you. Because if the church was full of men, pretty much nothing to get done, but if the church was full of men, it would not be the grace-filled, friendly place that it can be when men and women work together. So ladies, I want to say thank you. Mothers, I want to say thank you. Those who are to be mothers, I want to say thank you. Those who are spiritual moms, I want to say thank you. Those who are to take up the mantle of being and becoming a spiritual mom, I want to say thank you. Because God made us in his image. Male and female, he made us. And there are no such thing as mom god goggles. However much us blokes would love to be able to buy a set. Let us stand, because I'm going to end there.